Hey everybody, how's it going? I had a request to do a video on the complete processing of a raccoon. So basically we're going to go through three steps here. And before I even start this, I mean there's a ton of videos out there and guys do things differently. My suggestion is to watch, if you don't do this very often or if you've never done anything like this, watch some stuff, try some stuff and see what works out for you. I've tried, a, I've done a bunch of different ways on different critters and this is just a way that it's working out good for me. So if you like what I do and it works out good for you, great. If not, just try to try to get your own way of doing things. I'm just going to do this, hopefully for an instructional purpose. Uh, basically, we're going to do three steps. We're going to do skinning a raccoon, fleshing a raccoon, and then boarding a raccoon. I like the term boarding better than stretching it. You don't really want to stretch your, for, your fur. You're just trying to form it to a certain shape, basically. So I'm going to get on to the skinning portion here, and then we'll move on to the fleshing portion. I caught this boar coon this morning, decent sized boar coon really, and I won't be fleshing this one because I have one that I have slightly frozen a little bit so that the, the, uh, the fat is frozen on it. Some people might not do that, and I mean to each their own, but I like, them, I like the fat to be slightly frozen. So this one I will not flesh until tomorrow. I'll get this one the fat stiffened up on this and then I'll flesh this one tomorrow and I'll brush it out the one I'm going to be fleshing I've already brushed out right here I can see there's a burr already in here and slowly work that out with my fingers I'll brush it out and clean the fur out before I start fleshing you want to get stuff like this out of there before you flesh because that's how you can put holes in fur easily like I did yesterday so I'm going to get on with the skinning and I use certain knives I mean whatever knife end up feeling comfortable for you i've tried different knives for my first cut and a lot of my nice sharp knives i use this weeby knife i like the handle and i like the way it works one thing i don't like are the the blades that come with them uh lack of a better term they suck they they get they they dull really quickly so i get the uh the havilon replacement blades and they last a lot longer they're both really sharp out of the box but these just last longer so first and I don't know if you, you probably can't see the upper heel, but I'm going to cut from heel straight up to heel right here. And I'm doing this behind the camera, so I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible, but get enough explanation in as well. So I want to go from heel straight up to the heel. And this is a boar. I usually go right below the testicles right here. I'm going to poke in right here. And just, this is where these really nice sharp blades are really nice. Right there, the first cut, it's just split that thing right open from heel to heel. Some people might go above the testicle. This is just what I do. Now right here, I just split this open just a little bit right here. And stuff I picked up from other guys, I'll try to let you know who I picked it up from. And this first thing right now, I think I've seen this a couple guys doing this type of thing. But the first place I probably saw it was on Coon Creek. You take they call it a steel or something basically mine is just a hunk of metal rod i think it was an old uh torque wrench that broke so i just took and ground the tip down so i can poke in here i always go on the inside of the leg and just start pushing in here and you once you get the hang of this you can feel the tip of that thing and you work it right around the muscle between the fat poke straight through and now we're going to pull down on this really hard i'm going to raise this up some and hopefully be able to see this being pulled down here and i use my body weight on this a lot get the tail out of the way i mean i don't got a lot of body weight but i'm going to yank down on that pull it clear down to the heel here and i'm going to cut that off Now that side's free. Now I'm going to do the repeat process on the other leg right here. I'll probably I'm going to go on the outside of the leg because the camera's in my way right now to go to the inside. On the outside, but I just got used to going on the inside. Either way it works, whatever you get used to again. And this, this works really slick. Put that in there. I hang on it. Pull that down. Now you can just cut here. For me... This is a limit. It's quick. One, it's fast, 
and it, it eliminates a lot of blood and hacking into the bone and stuff and saves your knife. Cut that off right here. Now that's free. Now I'm going to get both feet hooked up. So basically now we want to work around the tail. A lot of the stuff you can do by pulling. Just... Now you got to be careful. <laughs> Raccoon hide is pretty tough. You don't want to yank too hard on something like a red fox like this. A lot of times you can grab like this and you turn your knuckles into it. Now we want to go from the, the anus, the vent, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to make two cuts like sort of straight this way. And I always just do two cuts and then finish off right here. The one there, I can peel a little bit of that fat right there. Just be careful with these really sharp knives. It's easy to put a hole in for. Cut that right there. Do the other side. Cut that just a little bit right here. And then I just slide this knife up under here and then finish off like that. Bam. Now that's all done right there. Yank down on the fur some here. Take your knuckles and turn it in like that. Some people save the penis bones. I don't have nothing. I don't got nothing to do with that, but. Cut that off. That's all free right there now. A lot of this will be removed when you cut the inspection window eventually. Okay, so I'm going to work around the tail now. I'm going to run my steel up underneath the tail here again. The same way it did. Whoops. <laughs> the hazard of trying to work around the camera too. I'm going to run this steel up under here. This is an invaluable tool. <laughs> Put that through there. And I'm going to use my body weight again. Pull down on that. I can yank down on that pretty hard. I'm going to pull this tail down a little bit. Take a knife. Split that right here. Now this is one of the tools that I just got that I get used to. It's an old, uh, an old fillet knife. For me, it's just easier to split the tail a little bit like this. I can shove that right down underneath there. Open that tail up a little more. Just do a little wee bit of cutting here. Pull that tail down enough. tail stripper now we're gonna do a push and pull motion here hopefully I can get this on camera <clears throat> push and pull got the bone out the whole tail bone out I got this little hook it's a tail I don't even know a zipper opener whatever I'm gonna finish opening up that tail Hook that in there and just pull it. Now the tail's completely open. I can flesh that out a little bit. Now we're just going to keep pulling down on the hide here. Again, you can grab when you've grabbed the fur, you can roll your knuckles into it. Now if you get to the point where it's getting hard to pull, it's hard to stand behind the camera and do this. You can just start making... Nice easy cuts right here. Stay above the fur. Do a little bit of cutting. Pull some more.
getting blood, that can be inevitable sometimes, especially when you got a fresh critter. It's easier to skin fresh animals. I mean, I'm not whining or complaining, but trying to skin behind the camera can be slightly difficult too. And we're just going to keep pulling down on the fur right through here. Again, if you want to, just you can pull with one hand and just slowly slice with another one. Just stay right above the fur. You slice that fat a little bit. Right between the 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 front legs is an easy place to put a hole in fur. I try not to cut here a whole lot. And it's easy to hit big veins and arteries or whatever in there. So I try to stay back here if I got to do any cutting. A little more pulling. Just do a little more cutting right here. It almost falls down on its own sometimes when you're cutting here. If you're saying, man, this guy's taking a long time to skin a raccoon. I'm trying to just show, give tips as well. A little more cutting here. Do a little pull. Getting close to the head and the shoulders now. A little more cut here. Eventually, we're going to get our steel and ram it up under the shoulders right here. Take your thumbs, once you get down to the shoulders here, you can start working your thumb in here a little bit and your finger. Get it poked in there a little bit. You can take this steel rod again, work it through there once you get it poked through. Bam, I'm gonna pull down on that front leg. Once you start pulling it with that thing, you can completely yank that thing down. You can literally cut it off and leave the foot right in there. Cut that off. Bam, that one's out. Repeat that process on the other side. Take that steel. Wiggle it through there, pop it through. Yank that way down. Got that pulled, that whole leg is pulled through. Cut that foot off. Now like right here we're gonna I'm just gonna slowly pull with one hand and just slowly cut right here it'll just keep coming down because I mean you can just yank it real hard if you want to I mean if you can yank real hard but if you can't just you can just keep trimming right here again I usually stay on the back of the head when I'm doing this stuff I can just see better right there I guess I don't Again, you might find somebody or you might have a different way of doing stuff. Now, if we come to the front, if you do any cutting here, you got to be very careful not to cut those carotid arteries and stuff or the carotid veins, whatever they are. Then you'll have blood everywhere. Do that. Once you got the legs off, you can put your fingers through the holes here to help pull on. <clears throat> Eventually, you're gonna you're gonna have to feel around for the earbuds right here. I can feel the earbuds right here and over here. I'm gonna cut straight into the skull here. There's the earbud popping out. I can hook my finger in there now and pull a little bit. Come over, get this other earbud. You gotta feel in there for that thing sometimes. Get my finger in there, cut above it. This is where you dull knives very quickly. Now I get one in each earbud. Just keep pulling and slightly cutting here. Eventually you're gonna hit the eye sockets right here. Usually right by the eye socket is where you want it. You can go into the jawbone a little bit and the, uh, the lips will start popping out. I can feel the eye socket here. I'm gonna cut straight in there. The eyeball's coming out. 
There comes the lip starting right there. Come over to the next eyeball. There's the eye. Just keep working your way down the bottom lip. Once I get it down so far, I, I run my little fillet knife right through the mouth. Let it come down a little farther. Put that through the mouth right there and I cut that bottom lip off. Then just slowly work down to the tip of the nose. I can feel, you can feel up in here and see how much cartilage you leave left have left there I don't like leaving a ton of cartilage there cut the cartilage off that's rat one skin raccoon okay so we're on to the fleshing part and oh yeah but I always wear <laughs> nitrile gloves and these gloves just for an extra little tip this brand right here my buddy uh, Shane gave me some of these microflex integra they're really tough awesome Okay, what tools you use and everything, that, that's personal preference and what you get used to. I have a Necker 600 fleshing knife. I, I'm used to it. This is what the, the one guy that let me use his shop, his, uh, that's what he had. So I just got the same kind and I'm just used to it. So, all right. Now, I flesh on my coons, I flesh even some of the head off. If I did a couple hundred coon a year, I probably wouldn't do this. It's probably not necessary. But I just still try to make my fur look as good as possible. And I, this is where it takes some practice using the sharp edge of your knife. And just, it's hard to explain. It's, it's a peeling and slicing motion you want to do on here. And especially down the back of the neck. And the very first, the portion of the back here can be really tough to flesh. This is... So I take, an, I take a little bit of this meat. Above the ears, I just peel that down a little bit. Again, this takes a little bit of practice. Not a lot of it. I just peel a little bit off, right down to the ear a little bit. It's a pushing and slicing motion right here, but you gotta be very careful. And then I take, take a hold of some of that stuff and I just, I trim it off with a knife in the end here. A little bit more of that ear cartilage comes off, not a big deal. And that's about all I do up on the head. I just get some of that major meat and stuff off of there. Down between the ears a little bit, push a little bit of that. All right, now here's where the, this is where you want to start right, I always start right below the ears and start getting really st more particular about things. I can already see my burn mark here. I hope I didn't go too hard on that one. I always do this section first just to get it done with. And then the rest of it's just a, pretty much just pushing the fat off and basically taking that and just, it's a slicing and pushing motion. Yeah, I might have might have went too tight on that one. Yeah, for me, this is the toughest part for me, so I like to get it done first. Once you get so far down the back, you'll feel it starting to free up a little easier.
Now I'll eventually come and get some of this stuff off as well. Get some of that meat off around the ears. Clean that off a little bit. We'll clean off the other ear a little bit. Right through there. And I use a wooden fleshing beam. So there's some hard edges right here. I, I, one thing I used to do is chase my fur around to the side and that's where I'd put holes in all the time. I would just take my time. I know some guys use the big uh, PVC fleshing beans. I might make one of them sometime. Seem like they might be pretty cool. But for now, this is my one fleshing bean does all. I'll take that hunk of meat and fat right there. I'll just trim it off with a knife. Right there. It's cleaned off. I don't got to get too particular here because I'm going to trim a lot of that out right here once I get it on the board. Just up underneath the chin a little bit. Oops. <laughs> I got my camera right up in my grill here, so. I'm just doing little short pushes. That's about all I can do right now. That little hunk there, I'd like to get that off too. Not that bad. Grab that and take my knife and trim that off. Now I got most of the, as far as I, I'm concerned, most of the tough stuff done. I'm gonna move my camera a little bit here. It helps me be able to push a little more here in a couple seconds. As soon as I feel that fat starting to free up on the back, coming down the back of the neck, that's when I'll switch over and start with the, uh, the dull side of the knife and pushing the fat off. I can feel that it's going really easy right there now. Now right here, I'm going to switch to the dull side of the knife. Again, I can't push too hard with it or too far with the camera. But once you get like if I didn't have my camera in the way, I could make big long strokes right here. But right over the legs, I just go straight up over top of the legs, pushing. My knife is almost flat right now. Right up over the top of that leg. Now you can use these things to pinch your fur down. I can clip this onto the top over here. Especially when you're doing uh, broader strokes. But I got my camera to where I can't do it. The underside of the belly, like of the raccoon, that's where the fur is. The, not the fur, but the, uh, the hide is the weakest. So you don't want to be pushing too hard there. Here's a grisly part just stuck on the neck again here. I'm going to turn over and use the short part of my knife again. I start, I feel it freeing up now. now That's where I'm going to have my knife nice and flat and just going to be pushing down here. Now 
Never push that hard on a red flock. Got the front leg here. I'm gonna ride right up over the top of that thing to start with. Then I'm gonna do the armpit a little bit. I'll be trimming that front leg off more as well. Do around the armpit a little. Finish off the other front leg. Get under the armpit a little bit. Trim some excess fat off here. This is one of the benefits of cutting the legs real long. I can eventually trim that off if I need to. Again, here on the belly. This will be trimmed out a lot for inspection window. The belly's still a little bit blue on that thing. And this is where you can make a mistake and come around the edge of your fleshing beam if you have a wooden one like mine. Here can be another little tough part right at the base of the tail. But it seems to me when the fat's frozen up a little bit, you might think this is a little bit runny right now, but if you do one... <laughs> A fresh one, you'll be amazed at how much fat's running around and turning into just liquid grease.
Again, a lot of this will be cut off for inspection window. I'm not going to get crazy with flesh and all that completely. Scrape a little more of that fat off just to get it out of my way. Now, I usually just go through and just, once I get 90% of the fat off, and do a final cleaning up. I'm going to flesh the tail out a little bit, too. Sometimes I'll use a sharp edge of the knife here too. You'd be surprised how much fat's in the tail. I always have an old rag of some kind and wipe my fleshing beam off a little bit here. Now this is just something I do. Yeah, I might have gotten a little crazy with the my dispatch pool this time. I would just give it a once over again after I'm pretty much done. Make sure I haven't missed any big piles of fat. It's got some nice leather on it, this thing though, that's for sure. This thing will probably be a 3 or 4X for sure. And down here, I'm not too concerned that's going to get cut. And we're about done with the fleshing. Alright, we're going to move on to the boarding here. Alright, this board here was one of my NAFA boards, but I just took it a little bit ago and ground and cut it to FHA specs. And it's not that hard to do, and then I just rounded, re-rounded the ends off. I made, this is just something I come up with for me. I got a little board here where I can rest the, the tip of the nose on. And then it just rests on the other end of my fleshing beam. And I can just, I can... Right here where my my hand is, I can put my my waist into here. I'm gonna put the camera here where I'll be doing the pinning. Okay, you don't want you're not looking at that's why I like to use the term boarding or forming. You don't want to be yanking on this fern, trying to stretch it and trying to make it longer than what it should be. All you're gonna do is make more work for yourself and weaken your fur. I usually pin the legs first, just give them a slight tug down, just a little bit, and I'll pin my legs first. And here's something I stole off of uh, angle trapping <laughs> a little piece of foam put all my tacks in I would just lay it right here on the up on the board that way I can just grab them as I go Pull that down just a, a little bit pin one leg Pin the other leg and I'm not stretching that very much at all Now I'm not going to pin the inner ones yet. I'm going to trim my inspection window that's where a lot of this fat here doesn't really matter if you get it all off. Now when I was first doing this, I, I think I was making my inspection windows way too big. But I was never downgraded by NAFA. So I just want a little inspection window here. Cut that out. Now I can pin the other side to my legs right here. I'm going to pull these in just slightly. Pin that. 
pin this one. Now I should have my raccoon nice and centered up. Got a little inspection window here. Now I'm going to flip the critter over. A little bit of fat here. I need to take my knife and just scrape that off a little bit. It's not. Again, you don't want to yank. You're not trying to yank this down real hard. That's why right. I, I might mark my board someday. But I just put it on there. Give it a little slight pull. This is where you want to try to keep the thing centered up as much as possible. Well, I had a little pause in the action here. Uh, I filled up one SD card already, so I have a feeling I'm going to be fast forwarding some of this in the <laughs> in the uploading. So I got both sides pinned right here. And I'm going to keep try to keep this nice and straight across here. You want a nice straight thing here. You don't want to add a V going up this way. That's why I really like these wooden stretchers. And the more you do this, just like anything else, a little bit of practice, comes around. Just pull it all down nice and straight. That's where I have, I like having lots of these pins. Pull it straight. Then I do the tail, sort of bunched up here, but that's uh, in my opinion, that's all right. <laughs> I'm gonna start spreading the tail out here. Now this is where if I had that piece of mesh, I'd be in good shape right now. But I'm not in bad shape. And I just keep working my way down the tail here. I'll throw another set right in here. Work the way down. Tail's all spread out nice here. It'll dry up nicely. Pretty straight across here. I mean, I could pull these two pins. I'm going to pull this pin. I'm just going to pin that tail right down to there now. And I'll pull this inner pin here. And I'll pin that tail down there. Now we're almost at a done deal here. Around here, I'm going to trim off his bottom lip and a bunch of this fatty stuff right here. That's why you don't got to get too crazy flesh in here. All this stuff can just be cut right off here. And I just trim those lips right on up there. Bam. And I even take and try to peel some of the lips right off. Nice and clean. I'll cut a little bit more of the front legs off here. Probably not on camera. That's pretty much a done deal on that bugger. Here's the tail all spread out. Pinned straight across, nice and straight. The inspection window. I just stuck two little pins here just to hold that in for now. Like I said, I get a little crazy here sometimes. Getting too close to the edge. Now what's going to happen is this coon is going to keep sweating fat out. And I'll show you one. Here's one I did a couple days ago. I'm not sure if it's picking up, but there's like a lot of oily stuff right here. I just take it every once in a while. Just take a paper towel, wipe that oily stuff off. And eventually they'll come out to be nice and dry. Just wipe that off a little bit. Even up in the tail here a little bit. Oh yeah, I gotta get a belly board stuck in that raccoon yet too. 
So that's about it. <laughs> I'm sure this video is longer than I wanted it to be. And probably longer than you wanted it to be. Hopefully this helps somebody out. And until next time. I got a mess to clean up here now. <laughs> I got 50 pairs. I used like, I don't know how many pairs of gloves changing the camera and stuff and changing stuff around. But oh well, I got a bunch of stuff to clean up. Hope you enjoyed the video and hope hopefully somebody learned something. Thanks for watching.